Okay. Uh, today we are going to look at biodiversity and global climate change. Yesterday, as you know, we have uh, dealt with uh, the entire thing like... Uh, are you getting my video? No. Yes, sir. Getting Okay, fine. Uh, yesterday, we have uh, done some last two classes. We have uh, really gone into some details of the global climate change, the phenomenon, how it is working and all these things, and uh, how we get uh, a change to climate due to greenhouse gases or global warming as an effect of the greenhouse gases. Now, in this uh, class, we are going to see a very important aspect of that, that is how biodiversity is going to be affected or going to be changing with the global climate change. So in this talk, I will be giving you some of the very general ideas about biodiversity. And uh, we will go into a bit more of a, uh, the details of the different types of biodiversity later. But uh, in this talk, it is you should know that it is very important that the effect of climate change is very general as far as uh, many, uh, many animals or plants are concerned. So we are just uh, going to look at some of those very general things that is happening to the biodiversity and uh, then we go into more specialized aspects. <clears throat> now, yesterday we have seen this particular slide that is how much warming has occurred during the last one century. So we have seen that uh, it is around 0 0.85 degrees Celsius for last one century, according to the IPCC 2014 report, which is the latest one, or the, which is called the fifth report, the which was published by the IPCC. IPCC has been publishing uh, reports for the last 15-20 uh, years, and this is the fifth report warning the world about uh, climate change and what is going to happen. And the sixth report is expected to come in to 2022. And that is going to be the last report. Uh, after that, I do not know what is the plan of IPCC. But uh, that uh, is going to complete a, com uh, a study on the whole climate change uh, uh, aspects. So what are the principal causes of biodiversity change or extinctions? We know that a number of things are there affecting the biodiversity. One major one, the first one that is uh, uh, mentioned here is the land use change. This is the most important in a way because we are changing. I, yesterday I told you we are urbanizing everywhere. So at the cost of what? at the cost of our natural vegetation naturally or the forests where the biodiversity is very rich. So land use changes are happening every year. You know that millions of hectares of tropical rainforests are being lost every year. And all over the world, this is a phenomenon that is happening. And that is actually, that is causing the major biodiversity loss or extinction. The second one, of course, is climate change, which we are going to see. I'm not going to tell you much about uh, land use change and uh, biodiversity. That is not part of this course. Then another one is nitrogen deposition. How nitrogen is deposited? Because of the human activity, the industrialization, many agricultural practices using fertilizers, all these things, you know, our rivers are 
getting much much more richer in nitrogen it's actually not a good thing because it uh, nitrogen at a very high concentration is poisonous to many animals and even human beings you get also a lot of problem because the blooming you can see in the lakes uh, a lot of plankton species are coming up in lakes so that the lake becomes almost green in color you would have noticed it everywhere even in within kerala you can see this one and uh, this is actually uh, because of the rich content of nitrogen in the water and this is affecting the biodiversity because many animals and other species are taking this one and then they develop health problems and many are perishing and fish population then species introductions we know i told you about uh, one case of the african mushi which was introduced into kerala and eating away many of our native fishes this has been the case even with uh, some other animals also there are quite a few stories with regard to that and this again causes a bit of a biodiversity change anyway i am not talking about any of these things except the climate change how climate change is actually causing biodiversity change or extinction now to understand this a little bit deeper we should know that the estimate of temperature projection for the 21st century so we are living in the 21st century and what is going to be the predicted temperature for this century now what the climate scientists have predicted is not just uh, don't think that uh, uh, it is 4 degree celsius or 5 degree celsius something like that although in uh, the general literature or the usual environmentalists may be telling all these things that uh, there will be an increase of 4 degree celsius or uh, something like that you know and uh, but that is the 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 one extreme they are say but it is not that extreme you should know that but anyway it is not anything consoling but at the same time you should know what exactly it is it is a, a, a bit difficult it needs a bit of explanation to understand this particular table now the this uh, uh scientists uh, clim climatic scientists have created six scenarios these are explained in the un report now uh, let us look at some of the scenarios a1 is rapid economic growth eh? there is going to be rapid economic growth that is one scenario that is predicted but now we know that this is not going to happen because this covid 19 has brought down the economic growth in all the countries to a very drastic level so the rapid economic growth scenarios that have been predicted a1 a2 a uh, all this i mean uh, the a1 you can see here a1 f1 uh, there is a1 t all these things there is going to be some change naturally because i we do not know when the economic growth is going to climb up because of covid uh, and the, the the moment covid uh, is going to disappear from this earth then we know that the economic growth will certainly pick up but we do not know how many years it will take to recover then a2 for example here you can see a2 is here, coming here a2 scenario a heterogeneous world with the local consumption what is this heterogeneous world with the local consumption uh we will have a world with uh, all different types of people that is uh, they will be uh, they will be using mostly local products but at the same time you find two extremes of people people consuming a lot and people consuming less so it is very heterogeneous type of a world we are predicting that is uh, i mean these are all predictions we do not know what is going what is the, the real truth or what is really going to happen then b1 you can see b1 scenario is here what is b1 world with the green technologies and no population increase yeah we will have solar power we will have wind power and uh, we will have uh, and with the no population increase also 
is it possible uh, we will not know i mean for example if the covid is going to kill many people in future then naturally the world population is uh, not going to increase as predicted or any other other things you know like uh, this is a pandemic and uh, another pandemic could come but forgive that uh, me saying that let it not come you know but uh, we cannot predict all these things so if in such a situation that is b1 world with the green technologies and no population increase they have predicted now b2 world with emphasis on local solutions local solutions for everything yeah that is b2 scenario here you can see a b2 scenario f1 a fossil intensive what is here where do you see f1 here the last uh, row you can see a1 f1 scenario that is uh, rapid economic growth at the same time very fossil intensive we are not going to use any green technologies we are going to use petrol diesel coal etc as it is now and use more of that and what is going to be the result for example a1 f1 that is going to be the worst scenario we can predict then t there is the t here t scenario you can see the second row non fossil energy sources suppose people are going to use a1 scenario rapid economic growth at the same time non fossil then there is a prediction then b balance across all energy sources see here there is a b scenario balance across all energy sources means that we will have both uh, green technologies for energy as well as the fossil fuel technologies for energy of this thing so uh, they have divided they have combined some of these letters and they have uh, actually come out with the six scenarios it is important to understand this and in each scenario the prediction is like this say for example b1 scenario the temperature but is b1 we can go world with the green technologies and no population increase the temperature is going to rise only by 1.8 degree celsius by the end of this century so this is probably the that we can expect the best with regard to climate change anyway there is going to be nearly 2 degree celsius increase in temperature by end of this century if this scenario works i'm not going into the other one now the worst scenario that is a1 f1 that is rapid economic growth and f1 fossil intensive technologies then the temperature will go up to 4 degree celsius i hope you understood this because but uh, uh, the, the scientists are not uh, the, it is only the economists and uh, politicians who predict uh, you know what kind of situations are going to be there the scientists no, don't predict these things because we do not know i mean we, nobody predicted this covid 19 for example but it came just like that you know in uh, within a few days you know of uh, time it came and we had to close down everything and so naturally uh, i mean I'm, I'm, first we thought in uh, march when we closed down that it is going to be maximum for one or two months now you see we have passed the six months and there is no sign of uh, really the economy getting warmed up again it, this is the situation not only in india everywhere in the world this is the situation so we do not know what is going to happen in the future as scientists are i mean very well aware about it Uh, although others are predicting too many for example economists have been predicting so many great great things you know that india is going to have a gdp of going to be 7 and we are going to have a boom of uh, you know development and all these things and uh, uh, nothing has happened you know so this is this is there so that is the difference between scientists and uh, politicians and uh, economists and all these things you know we can project many things but that does need not happen you know this is the thing so the the this uh, actually they are very wise in keeping these scenarios and rather than saying 4 degree celsius it is going to rise nobody will be, i mean a scientist will not believe that and uh, at the same time this is very meaningful so we can say simply that the temperature rise for this century will be one between 1.8 
and 4 degrees Celsius. That is the very wise thing to say. Now, this last column you can see estimate of sea level rise in meters. So here you can see that uh, the, the worst thing, it can rise by 0.59 meters by end of the century. That means almost more than half a meter the sea level can rise from the present situation. And you can imagine what is going to be the situation in many places of Kerala and the entire coast of India. Many cities are going to be drowned, like in Mumbai uh, and uh, many other uh, cities uh, which are on the coastal area, both in the east and the west coast. So the, that, that kind of, an, and uh, the minimum would be around, say, point three that is three centimeters rise will be there so this is going to be the situation sorry 30 30 centimeters 30 uh, approximately 30 centimeters rise will be there by end of the century okay now continued greenhouse gas emissions at or above current rates would cause further warming and induce many changes in the global climate system during the 21st century that would very likely be larger than those observed during the 20th century. If we are going to emit greenhouse gases at the same rate above the current rates would cause further warming and induce many changes in the 21st century much so the change would be much larger than what happened in the 20th century so climate change is going to be one of the main drivers for changing biodiversity patterns in this century according to ipcc so the climate change is going to really change the entire biodiversity of this earth that is what the ipcc is predicting IPCC prediction means that it is a scientific prediction. Okay, now why biodiversity is impacted? This is a question. Because individual plants and animals and therefore species can only function physiologically. Huh? We all function physiologically, isn't it? Because, I mean, uh, when do we become sick? We become sick when our physiology is disturbed, is it not? Our environment is disturbed, our physiology is disturbed. So then we become sick. For example, we get fever. Fever is just a symptom of some or other disease inside us. Now, that could be, that will change the physiology. It is because of the change in physiology. So we all live physiologically and successfully complete their life cycles under specific environmental conditions. See, animals and plants, all living systems can live only in certain specific environmental conditions. Say, if we are going to go to the North Pole or Antarctica, how can, can we really survive? We cannot, because we are, our whole body is not fit for living under that kind of a cold situation. The people may be living there for months together, but they take protective measures. They, they stay in heated thing, heated cabins and they have clothing which are meant for very, very cold condition, minus 50, minus 60, like that, you know, and uh, that kind of condition. And changes... Changes to climate are likely to have significant impacts on plants and animals from the level of the individual right through to the level of ecosystem or biome. Like uh, I have told you that changes in climate or changes in temperature are likely to impact all organisms. Yesterday I gave you the example of the fish in the aquarium. Huh? Even a small change in temperature to the level of 0.2 degrees Celsius is sufficient to kill the fish in an aquarium. Isn't it? This is, uh, this is something that we have to know. So every uh, organism, 
including human beings, all animals, all insects, all plants, all birds, everything has got a particular adaptive system in it by which its physiology is working. If you are going to upset this adaptive system, then the physiological malfunctioning is there, then the metabolism is affected and the animal or the plant is going to die in future. So this is the problem. So climate change, maybe we are looking at a global warming to the order of say 0.85 degrees Celsius for the last century. And in this century, we are going to have a minimum of 1.8 degrees Celsius increase. You should know that many organisms are going to fail. The biodiversity is going to be seriously affected. Even we do not know what is going to happen to the human population on this earth. So it is that serious. Now, this is a diagram which uh, I myself have drawn with uh, one of my colleagues and published already. That is climate change impact on vegetation. Say, for example, we are representing the entire vegetation by a tree. And uh, what are the impacts of climate change? One is rising temperature. Another is elevated carbon dioxide. Then many extreme events like uh, droughts, floods and all these things. And then pests and diseases, new vectors and things like that. So many insect diseases are there. So what is going to, how the vegetation is going to be affected? Its photosynthesis is affected. NPP, net primary production is affected, nitrogen use is affected, phenology is affected. What is phenology? I hope you now understand phenology. That is uh, the flowering, fruiting, migration of birds. These are all part of the phenology. That is the life cycle. Huh? The life cycle of any organism is actually the phenology. There are different stages in the life cycle. So you study that and that becomes phenology. Then Migration and extinction of species, species composition in an ecosystem, growth of plants as well as animals, WUE, which is water use efficiency, that is how much water is actually used by the vegetation. All these important physiological phenomena are going to be affected by climate change or global warming. So this is the general thing about uh, the plants or the trees in the forest as well as in the agricultural field. So let us go, go further. In a climate change situation, species have three basic alternatives. Uh, this is a very general conclusion you should know. They have only three alternatives. Any species, let it be plant or the animal adapt to the new environmental conditions. What is adaptation? Yeah, we know that uh, people can adapt to a new environment, isn't it? We, maybe many of you are uh, coming from different places in India and then you come to Wayanad and it is a uh, relatively an elevated uh, area. So you, the, it is a relatively cold throughout the year. So you get adapted very soon. You can adapt to it. In the same way, you go to Gulf countries and there you get adapted to very high temperatures also. So this is possible. So this is true even with the plants and animals also. Because you would have uh, noticed that we, if you are a, a little bit experienced in growing vegetables uh, in your garden or around your house, you will find that they will get uh, adapted to the new conditions. Some of the trees which you may be planting, they all get adapted to that. Now, second alternative for them, migrate to appropriate environmental conditions. Migrate to different environmental conditions. This is possible for all living beings, let it be plants or animals. You may ask how plants can migrate because they are rooted things, you know, they are stationary things. Now they can also migrate because 
they have a seed dispersal system by which the seeds are carried by some other organism, birds or uh, insects or something like that, and then distributed to a colder place. There they come up, and in the hot place down here, they may perish. But still, their seeds are available at the uh, colder, I mean, a cooler place, so they survive. That is their their way of migrating. Uh, it is not. It is a. Uh, it's an involuntary process, you know, not a voluntary process. So, but uh, but we know that uh, animals, insects, and all different uh, uh, groups of uh, phyla, they can all migrate. They do. They are doing it. You know, they migrate from one place to another. I think I showed you one uh, slide where uh, the migration happens uh, in uh, South Southern America. No, I I told you that uh, this one. Then uh, the third alternative is become extinct, eh? commit suicide. <laughs> that is the only way. Because many of these uh, organisms, there are, uh, they have no other way. They, they may not be able to migrate. A very good example is the fish. Fish, they just, uh, they easily get extinct. Because you may, you may be knowing that in a river or a pond, it is actually they are restricted. Huh? Their area is restricted. So the pond gets heated up. No way of doing it. Or otherwise you will have to listen to the story of the crane, you know, who was taking fish one day every day, one fish by one fish, you know, and eating them all away promising that they will be taken to some other place so they are, so that way there are many organisms which have no escape from the climate or the high temperature they will become extinct many are already getting extinct that you should know now wwf scientists not is w world wildlife fund scientists have estimated that most species on this planet, including plants, will have to move faster than 1,000 meters per year if they are to keep within the climate zone which they need for survival. What is it the scientists are saying? They will have to move faster than one kilometer a year that is 1,000 meters per year, if they have to keep within the climate zone which they need for survival. Understand, because the temperature is going up in such a way that, for example, uh, I am giving you a very specific example. Any organism which cannot survive in Calicut, when the temperature is going up, which is at the coastal area of Kerala, will have to slowly move to Wayanad. Eh? There is a gradation of elevation where the temperature is cooling down and then reach the top. Understand that Wayanad tablelands, it is a tableland actually, which is part of the Deccan Plateau, you should know Wayanad. And uh, uh, so what happens is that finally it will reach Wayanad and then they can be happy. Now, are they going to be happy there also? Of course, they can prolong their life to some extent, but not sure what will happen later if the Vienna temperature is also going to go up, what is going to happen? This is the problem. So, to some extent, the migration is possible and life on Earth can prolong, but not sure whether it will prolong forever. This is the problem. But we should not conclude anything. In science, uh, we should not uh, quickly conclude without giving evidence. All these are actually coming from models. Requires long-term long -term data. We need long-term data. This is for you people to collect long-term data. In your projects, in your future research projects, when you are going to do the PhD and the postdoctoral and all those things, you have to go into that. Presently, we depend on models. 
we are we, we, we are very good at models you know in mathematical models statistical models we make that kind of a model saying that it is going to be like that the predicted temperature is going to be like that and what are the organisms that can, can survive but not really based on field data to some extent it is proxy data that is used in models you know so you have to have clear data the field data so impact of climate change on biodiversity what are the impacts of climate change on biodiversity the first one is ecosystem services are going to be affected you know ecosystem services ecosystem services are nothing but the services given by the ecosystem to the human beings and other animals also then carbon sequestration what is carbon sequestration sequestration i have probably told you that it is just means removal removal of carbon removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that is carbon sequestration water use of vegetation vegetation water use is going to be affected then phenology i told you what is phenology the life cycle stages they are all going to be affected these are the general effects of uh, climate change on biodiversity so they, these are all related to ecosystem services as such also that is another big problem so we are going to see these things now and then uh, we will be able to get a better idea about how biodiversity is going to be affected first uh, let us see what are ecosystem services first uh, we will see uh, how ecosystem services what are ecosystem services and then we will see how it is going to be affected when biodiversity is going to be affected by climate change defined as the processes and conditions of natural ecosystems that support human activity and sustain human life uh, can natural ecosystem is doing a lot of work for us without our knowledge in fact it has been a very good example i will tell you we are breathing air very good air huh? suppose you go to a hospital you have got a uh, suppose you have you are sick and you have got a problem with your lungs and they have to give you oxygen artificially how much will they charge for the oxygen that you are going to take eh? say for example the ventilator that is usually used in our days a lot of covid patients are in ventilators you know there is a given oxygen also along with that then many are having just oxygen breathing itself and it is very expensive very very expensive now to have a ventilator nothing less than 2000 rupees a day or more than that you know and oxygen breathing again it costs quite a uh, hundreds of rupees but in our everyday life are we paying anyone for the oxygen that we breathe in we are not we are getting it free it is a free service given by nature the trees are breathing out the oxygen and you and all the animals are taking it in and having our blood purified in our lungs because of oxygen is it not free it's not a is it not a great service if nature wants to charge nature can make billions and billions every year is it not okay now second is uh, another one is uh, the uh, the, the uh, food timber fresh water i am telling you we drink fresh water i don't know if any of you are paying for water it may not be you have, may have a well in your home or uh, maximum if you are living in a city in india you will have a good water supply system which is uh, purified water coming in and but you pay a very very small amount for that one why is it so but 
if you want to buy the bottled water, it is nothing less than 15 rupees a liter. Is it not? But you get the water free from your well, from the rain, from the river. So all these sources are there. Now, is it not an ecosystem service? Yes, it is an ecosystem service. Now, maintenance of soil fertility, we think that it is because we add all these fertilizers that uh, soil became become fertile. No. It is actually the nature is contributing. So much of degradation of waste material is there, adding to the soil fertility. Climate regulation, natural pest control. See, birds are helping in pest control. And there are so many other agents also doing it, not by spraying pesticides. Then we get other services like food. Food we eat, it is a part of the ecosystem service that we are getting. We may be cultivating, but it is the ecosystem service that maintain the agriculture and the cultivation. And timber, everything, you know, everything that uh, we have is nothing but ecosystem service, service of our ecosystem. And uh, what is the connection of biodiversity with this ecosystem service? This is what I am going to now tell you. Just uh, listen very carefully. We have got the biodiversity. And the biodiversity is all interacting among themselves. And this is interacting with the human beings also. Say animals are interacting with the plants, plants are interacting with other plants, animals are interacting with other animals, and humans are interacting with both plants and animals. So, so many such interactions, if you look carefully in nature, you can see. I will come into that interactions also. Now, at the same time, they are interacting with the soil, they are interacting with the air and the atmosphere, they are interacting with the water also. So it is such a big ecosystem, which is, or a biome that is, we are witnessing around us. Now, that kind of a system that is interacting, interdependent system of functioning of the ecosystem will give rise to the so-called ecosystem functions. The entire ecosystem is functioning. Whatever damage you are doing to the ecosystem, you are polluting a river, soon the river recovers. You are polluting a forest, it recovers very soon. So, so much of damage we are doing, still the ecosystem is recovering and it is functioning. It is every day you find a fresh morning, is it not? But this is there. And that ecosystem function will maintain all natural resources. Suppose, let us imagine an earth where all the bacteria are going to put on a strike. They say we are not going to function. What will happen? There will be no decay of waste material. Everything will be spread around us. Nothing will go into the soil. And in a few days, we will find that this earth is actually not an earth, but it is a hell. Is it not? So, so it is such a great thing that uh, these microorganisms are doing for us, you know. They are, they, are, uh, they are maintaining the natural resources for us. They are purifying the water. They are purifying the air. And so many such things are there due to ecosystem. Then sustain human health and agriculture. Because of this, we have a human health visit sustained and agriculture we are able to sustain and thereby improve the economy. Finally, it comes to economy also, improving the economy. And which assures quality of life. Understand? We need a quality of life and not standard of life. Usually, 
the politicians will tell you about standard of life, improving the standard of life. I will give you an example. What is the difference between quality of life and standard of life? Assume that you are today moving in a cycle, bicycle. And after a few months, you get some money from your parents or somebody for working a part time. You earn some money and you buy a car. And within a few years, you think about buying a Benz car or a BMW car. Then what will people say about you? They will say, his or her standard of life has increased greatly during the past couple of years. Is it not? But I tell you, imagine one thing. Maybe you are using all these things, but around you, you will find so much of industrial pollution. And you find the water is getting polluted every day. And everything that you are using, the food that you are using is full of pesticides. Can you say that your quality of life is there? You have a high standard of life, but you don't have a quality of life. Quality of life is actually determined by the ecology around you or the environment around you. So this is something that we have to aim for. And finally, who is assuring this? It is the biodiversity, the plants and the animals and their interaction with the environment. So this is very important. So when somebody says that a particular organism need to be protected, don't find fault with him or make fun of him. Or when somebody says that these quarries are creating a lot of problem, or when somebody says that these resorts are creating a lot of environmental problem, don't make fun of them. They are saying something of the truth. We think that economy is going to be affected, but in the long run, economy is going to perish, disappear, if we do not plan according to a sustainable development. That is, respecting the environment around you. This is sustainable development, which should be, then knowledge will be available for our next generation. So, what are the ecosystem functions directly affected by changes in biodiversity? Huh? We know that pollination is directly affected. Pollination directly affects. Suppose the bees are going to perish. It has, it has happened in many places. Bees have got perished due to what, you know, pesticides. They have got destroyed. So, what happened? The productivity came down for agriculture. Many plants were not pollinated. This happened in Shimla, which is the most uh, biggest apple growing area of India, where people started spraying at different places for apples. And uh, you know, when they got pests, finally, what happened? The, the bees also got perished. And so the apple crop was not there. Uh, although you intended to have a better apple crop. But finally, bees have to pollinate these apple trees, you know. And without pollination, no fruiting. So this is there. Seed dispersal. You need many animals. You need many birds for seed dispersal in the natural system. Climate regulation. Climate is regulated also by the vegetation to a great extent. Carbon sequestration. Carbon will have to be removed from the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide will have to be removed. Then only we can really breathe properly. <coughs> Agricultural pest and disease control. That is again going to be affected. Human health regulation. Human health is also very much connected. And you should know that 
loss of a keystone species can change an entire ecosystem. I am coming to one example of that. You know what is a keystone species? A keystone species is one species. It can be a plant or an animal or even any organism on which many other species are totally dependent on. If a particular species, say for example, a particular tree is there in the forest and there are so many insects which are eating its pollen, many birds are eating its fruits, many animals, mammals are eating its uh, 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 other parts and many plants are actually mm -hmm. parasites on that and so many species are dependent on that. Now, what will happen to such a, such a species that is a keystone species? And suppose you cut that species of tree or that particular tree, then so many other organisms are affected. An entire ecosystem can be changed by that. You should know this one, this fact. So just destroying a particular species without any regard for other species is something very detrimental to the ecosystem. Now, ecosystem functions indirectly affected by changes in that. The last, time, last slide we have seen those which were directly affected and this is indirectly affected. Primary production, net primary production is indirectly affected. Nutrient and water cycling soil formation and retention of the soil. This indirectly supports the production of food, fiber, potable water, shelter and medicine. So biodiversity and in turn the ecosystem function is going to really affect food, fiber, water, shelter, medicines, etc. etc. So everything is going to be affected if there is a climate change and our biodiversity is going to be seriously affected, these are all going to happen. Now, I am giving you an example of a pollination again. Eh? This is actually an interaction between plants and animals. Pollination is nothing but an interaction between plants and animals. It's a very good subject for wildlife studies. You can take projects in pollination those who intend to do that. That's a good subject. Many, many pollination mechanisms can be understood, are still to be understood, especially in our tropics. Crops are at risk of yield losses when pollinating agents are not there. I told you an example of the apple, even in Kerala that is there now. I will tell you about that. $120 billion per year estimated as all pollination ecosystem services. In terms of money, it is $120 billion due to pollination, considered as an essential input to agricultural production. You know that uh, there are many countries in the world where they are growing honeybees just to increase the productivity. They have seen productivity increase up to level of even 30%. That is increase in production up to 30% due to the population of increasing the honeybees and many crops require the honeybees and so they put the beehives in all these their plantations and all that and they try to increase the productivity then genetic impoverishment of species if pollination cross pollination is not there self pollination can result and that brings in genetic impoverishment. That is, genetically, the whole thing becomes very weak. Now, I tell you one very good example is the teak. This is the teak flower in Kerala. You should know that the teak is facing a very serious problem in Kerala. That is, we are not having enough seeds for germination of the next generation of the teak trees for the forest department. So KFRA was once asked to look into this problem. And what they found that the right kind of pollination agents were missing. It is not honeybees or anything which is pollinating. It is some kind of other insect. It is a hymenopteran. 
insect. But their population was the coming down because of some fungal attack to the thing. I do not know whether it is due to uh, climate change that it is maybe indirectly climate change, but due to a direct uh, fungal attack on the eggs or uh, the larva of this particular insect that they found. So this is all the is all possible. Now, I was telling you about a keystone species. Say so this is a very good example of a study conducted in Karnataka as a keystone species, lion-tailed macaque, and the tree species called Culenia exarilata. Actually, this tree is occurring in the Silent Valley in Kerala, and this macaque is also occurring in the Silent Valley. Now, what is the relation between these two? 80 to 95 percent of woody plants in the tropics depend on animals for seed dispersal. This particular tree is depending on this particular species. Actually, it is a very favorite food for this monkey, this seed of this one. And they take it, this fruit, and they take that fruit to different places in the forest and disperse them. And they germinate and they are forming a big population there. So includes ants to elephants. Reduction in frugivore population can have dramatic effect on biodiversity. So these frugivores, which are, uh, you know, eating these fruits, the, if their population is going to come down, then there is reduction. Removal of a keystone species can completely change the ecosystem. Say, this is a keystone species, therefore. And you can say even this particular plant is, and these are having a very symbiotic relationship. It seems this monkey does not have many other food items except this uh, culinia. And they have to eat it at least once during one some part of the year. Then only their whole metabolism will really function. These are all, you know, very close relationship between plants and animals. Then I was telling you about uh, climate regulation. Plants may alter climate by carbon sequestration, albedo change, evapotranspiration, temperature, and fire regime. Now, what do the forests do in climate regulation? They sequester carbon, they remove carbon dioxide, thereby the greenhouse gases are going to be reduced. That is one way of uh, affecting it. Then albedo change. What is albedo? Albedo change is nothing but the sun's rays are coming onto the canopy of a tree. Then what happens that part of that sun's rays are absorbed by the canopy and do, does the photosynthesis. Part of the, the uh, rays are actually reflected back. That reflected rays are that part of the solar rays is called the albedo. So it is albedo change. What is albedo change? So depending upon a tree species, the, the, the albedo can change. Some trees have a capacity to absorb a lot of solar radiation, whereas some trees, the leaf is very reflective. So the albedo is increasing. Much of it is actually going away. Thereby, the heat is not generated in the forest. Understand? So it is cooling effect is there. Then evapotranspiration, which is again another important part. That is, the trees are absorbing and through the transpiration it is uh, cooling down. It is actually nothing but the evaporation from the leaves of the trees. And it is actually cooling down. It's creating a very good microclimate. Haven't you experienced this when you sit under a tree on a hot sun? you will find that it is very cool. It is because of the evapotranspiration. Then temperature and fire regime, that is also going to be altered because of the greenness of the trees. The dominance plant species and spatial arrangement of landscape units can modify the climate. Say, for example, in uh, much part of uh, the Western Ghats in Kerala, I mean Kerala, Karnataka and Maharashtra and all these states, you will find that there is a much be better greenery compared to the other side. What is the reason? There is uh, more rain and because of that more vegetation is there. So 
naturally the weather and the climate are much better on the western side when compared to the eastern side so this is all climate regulation then carbon sequestration again i was telling you the woodiness of a community greatly enhances the carbon sequestration because they live longer decompose slowly and contain more carbon say these trees contain a lot of carbon because this wood is made up of nothing but carbohydrates of which the carbon is the major solid part of a wood so the wood we are we are constructing houses with the wood so a lot of carbon is actually used for that now they can be big sink or sometimes even a source now what is that uh, comment this is actually representing a source sorry sink whereas this is representing a source what is the difference i told you that this is a big storehouse of carbon a forest so it is actually a sink for carbon suppose the same place is given to forest fire as shown in this picture what is it then it is a big source of carbon or carbon dioxide when the forest is burning it is reacting with the oxygen in the atmosphere carbon dioxide is formed so everything that was in the sink is returned to the atmosphere thereby the forest becomes a source of carbon so forest are very critical things one is that it can be a sink which is good for us at the same time the danger is that it can be a big source that is why i told you that in america australia and many of these countries the forests are burning and it is actually contributing a lot of carbon dioxide otherwise they should have been a big sink for carbon dioxide instead they are becoming a big source sometimes now agricultural pest and disease control increased genetic diversity of crops decreases pathogen related crop losses crop species richness can decrease weed infestations by the beginning of 21st century some 2645 cases of resistance of species to biocides had been recorded in insects and spiders involving more than 310 pesticide compounds and 540 different insect species you should know that lot of pests pests in the uh, in the agriculture they are insects and uh, many of them are developing resistance to pesticides and uh, so many of these pesticides are becoming outdated also so what happens even if we spray these pesticide there is no use so what is the final outcome increased genetic diversity of crop is decreasing that is the problem we are having clones of the same material thereby once a particular clone is affected rest of the entire clone is lost and weed infestations are there if species crop species richness can uh, decrease weed infestation so all these things you know by beginning of 20th century a big number of uh, species resistance have been increased to biocide biocides and especially insects and spiders and different insect species so this is a, another big problem now biodiversity and human animal health regulation you know that over 60% of human pathogens are transmitted from animals to humans even covid it is said by some scientists that it is actually coming from the wet market of china what is wet market of china where they are selling animals live specimens are kept and when some customer comes it can be dressed and killed and given sold to them 
and along with that all kinds of uh, all different kinds of animals are kept in the same type of cages and chance of infection coming in covid virus is supposed to be one such thing one such example we are not sure but uh, there was a paper on that now many of these are transmitted by arthropod vectors from wildlife species creating the potential for ecological processes to affect human disease risk. So your course is very important in future. Eh? We are getting many new diseases. What are the, what is the involvement of many of these wildlife and their relation with insects and then human diseases. Many of them are forming vectors for carrying many viruses and bacteria to human beings. So study on this aspect is very limited. So, you are the people to study some of these things. Now, what is the vulnerability of biodiversity and ecosystem due to global climate change? Now, I think uh, uh, since the time is up, I should stop now and uh, deal with this part in the next class. I hope that is fine with you. Is that okay with you? Yes, sir. It's fine, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe next week on the same days, I will announce uh, within a couple of days. By Monday, I will announce. Okay? So that uh, you will be able to uh, prepare in advance and come prepared. Okay, sir. Okay. So how was the class today? Was it okay? You, you got everything? Yes, sir. It was good. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We understood everything. Okay, fine.